Hi, welcome to Vishnu Su Smart Info Online Classes. For more online classes, join in our Telegram group. See, today we are learning about capacitor network diagrams. How to solve the capacitor effective capacity in case of parallel plates separation. See, now in this, uh, we have four different plates we have, assume equally spaced. One, two, three, four. These are the four plates. Four plates are equally spaced. Second plate is joined to A. Third plate is joined to B. Assume this second plate is joined to battery positive terminal. B is joined to the battery negative terminal. You have four plates here, equally spaced. In these four plates, we will get three capacitors C1, C2, C3. We label those capacitor names as C1, C2, C3. For n plates, we will get n number of n minus 1 number of capacitors. That's all. Now, our task is to find effective capacity across AB, mark A, mark B. A plate is joined to the second uh, A, A point is joined to the second plate and B point is joined to the third plate. Now our task is to find the effective capacity. Between 2 and 3 C2 is there. Between 2 and 3. 2 is joined to A. 3 is joined to B. Between 2 and 3 there is one capacity that is C2. Between 2 and 1, somewhere here I am marking 1 because 1 is not joined to B directly. Between 2 and 1, one capacitor is there, let it be C1. First plate is joined to the fourth plate and fourth plate is joined to the third first one is joined to the fourth one see here obviously here this is third and somewhere here fourth four and one are joined four and one are joined this is c3 we know C1 equal to C2 equal to C3 because all are equally spaced which is epsilon naught A by D. Let it be C. Now, two capacitors of equal capacity joined in series. For them one is joined in parallel. We got to know effective capacity very easily across A and B. This is one simple method. We will go with one more example. Let us see. Similarly, four plates we have. One and three. Two and four are joined. Let this is joined to A and this is joined to B. Just label the plates. One, two, three. Four. Total four plates we have. Out of four plates, obviously we will get three capacitors. Mark the capacitors now. This is C1, C2, C3. C1, C2, C3. Three capacitors are there. A and B are the two points. Across A, B only we need effective capacity. Let's see, A point is joined to 1 and 3, mark 1 and 3 here. B point is joined to 2 and 4, mark 2 and 4 here. C1 is the capacity which is across 1 and 2. 1 is there joined to A, B is there joined to, 1 is there joined to A, 2 is there joined to B. So across A and B, this is 
C1. Coming to C2. C2 is joined across 2 and 3. 2 is joined to B. 3 is joined to A. Here, one more capacity. This is C2. Coming to C3, 3 and 4. 3 is joined to A. 4 is joined to B. Now, this is the situation. This is C3. We know C1, C2, C3 same. Because all are equally spaced. Effective capacity, it is very easy to find now. All are in parallel. Across A and B. Get effective capacity, that is 3C. Got it? Yes. One more. This time we will go with more number of plates. I have seven plates now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven plates. Label the plates now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Total seven plates. Connect them. Randomly you connect. I am connecting two and four, suppose. Two and four join to A. Two and four join to A. Three and six join to B. Three and six join to B. Now our task is to find effective capacity across A and B. As usual, C1. C2, C3, C4, C5, C6. Total 6 capacitors are there since we have 7, seven plates. Mark junction A, mark junction B. A junction is joined to what are the plates you check once? 2 and 4, right? A is joined to 2 and 4. B junction is joined to 3 and 6. 3 and 6. Let's go with C1 now. C1 is the capacity which is joined across 2 and 1. 2 is joined to A. 1 is nowhere. Capacity, let label it as 1. Label it as C1. Because 1 is not joined to B directly. Come to C2. Between 2 and 3. 2 is joined to A. 3 is joined to B. Between 2 and 3. We have one capacity. That is C2. Between 3 and 4. 3 is joined to B. 4 is joined to A. 3 is joined to B, 4 is joined to A. Again, we have one more capacitor directly connected. Let it be C3. Between 4 and 5, 4 is joined to A, 5 is not joined to B. Mark this as 5. 4 is joined to A, 5. Between 4 and 5, one more capacitor is there. Let it be C4. Now come to C5. C5 is joined across 5 and 6. But of course 6 is joined to B. 5 is there already. Between 5 and 6. C5 is there. Come to C6. Across 6 and 7. 6 is joined to B. 7 is nowhere connected. I am going in this way. Here is 7. 1 and 7 are not connected. Let's see. 1 and 7 are not connected. Now we got the effective capacity very easily. 2 are there. 2 capacitors. Let it be C1 and C6. Those 2 capacitors are in the open network. Those 2 capacitors are in the open network. 
Now ignore them. A, B. We have one capacitor connected directly. One more capacitor. More two are there in series. This is the effective capacity. C, C, C and C. After this, it is very easy to find effective capacity. Right? So whatever the thing, if some, sometimes they won't mention about equally spaced. If separation is different, accordingly get the capacity. Individual capacitors are known, right? With this, we can solve very easily. Yeah. For more this kind of applications, join our telegram group. Thank you.